As you know, since February 24th, the entire security architecture of the entire European continent is under threat. The values in which we believe in, for which we fought, and are very much hard-earned, such as security, stability, and democracy, are under threat not just in Ukraine, but also beyond. And that is for, very, uh, for one very simple reason, because Russia's intentions are not just to violate the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. Russia's intentions are to fight the values-based systems, our democratic way of life that we have built with so much sacrifice and effort. And at the same time, Russia's efforts are to undermine the transatlantic cooperation and the transatlantic achievements that have been made in our part of the region. Now, in, in the face of such aggression, we need to stand united, not only through words and through statements, but also through action. For that reason, Kosovo has been, um, at the very outset, very clear on its sanctions against Russia and at the same time solidarity with the people of Ukraine by also offering to host refugees. We are also hosting Ukrainian journalists understanding the importance of telling the truth during a time of war and the importance of fighting propaganda uh, from Russia and its proxies in our region. So in that sense, um, while peace and stability in our region is still very fragile, we must understand that unless we make a clear choice on where we stand, we will not be able to protect this peace and stability that we have achieved. So far, all the other countries of the Western Balkans, except for Serbia, have chosen to be on the side of Ukraine, whereas Serbia, as constantly demonstrated and as also uh, confirmed uh, with the recent phone call between Vucic and Putin, they have chosen to stand with Russia in this uh, war of aggression and unfortunately give Russia the kind of oxygen that it needs to continue this war. So I believe finally that the European Union needs to send a very clear signal to Serbia that if it continues this way, its accession talks should be suspended immediately. Certainly, Euro-Atlantic membership, membership in the European Union on one side, as well as NATO on the other, is the only way forward. My country has never looked elsewhere. We have seen this as not just the vision of the people of Kosovo, but also the vision of every single uh, government and all institutions that have led the country so far. And we have been working on this path tirelessly, understanding that no matter how difficult this path is, it's the only way forward to keep the peace and stability in, in our region. And as um, stated by many so far, a Europe whole free and at peace will never be able to be achieved without the Western Balkans joining the European Union. On the other side, as you know, many countries in our region are already in NATO, including Montenegro, and that has only contributed to more security in the region. That's why I strongly believe that it's about time that both Kosovo and Bosnia-Herzegovina are offered a clear accelerated path towards joining NATO because that's the, the way forward for the region. Serbia obviously is not showing that intention, but for the rest of us that are working towards joining NATO, it should be clear that um, looking at membership from a security perspective is indispensable now in the light of the Russian aggression against Ukraine. We have formed an inter-institutional working group that is led by our foreign minister that is going through all of the application criteria as well as procedures to make sure that we determine when would be the exact time and the best time for that to happen. So once the work of this working group is finished, obviously then we can come out with a specific date. But I need to emphasize that the road towards NATO also goes through the Partnership for Peace, which for us is the very st first step that we need to work on. Uh, right now we're facing a, quite an absurd situation where Partnership for Peace has included countries like Lukashenko's Belarus as well as Serbia, both of which are anti-NATO countries and don't even aim to join countries, but Kosovo has not yet received an invitation to, to join NATO. Uh, we need to uh, work together with all of our NATO partners, member states in particular, in order to make sure that we get that invitation and we start our work with PFP first and then move on with concrete steps towards join joining NATO.
if we had looked for the reactions of Serbia, we had never, we would have never declared independence. Obviously, uh, what we look at as uh, important factors to determine our future or to determine whether we apply for an international organizations is the interest of the Republic of Kosovo, the will of the people of Kosovo, the interest, the regional stability as such, as well as whether our membership can also be an added value except for uh, getting a lot of value from uh, uh, these international organizations towards Kosovo. But after all, we must understand that our membership in these organizations are not just political actions. The end beneficiaries are our citizens. When Kosovo joins the Council of Europe, our citizens will finally have access to the European Court of Human Rights. So ultimately, this is a human rights issue. Saying no to Kosovo's membership in the Council of Europe means saying no to a higher standard of human rights in Europe because we are part of the continent. Secondly, saying no to uh, Kosovo in an organization such as Interpol means saying no to fighting cross-border crime. So if a country is in favor of fighting cross-border crime, they should support Kosovo participating in these mechanisms. And the same goes for all of the other international organi organizations. Obviously, when the time comes and when we are ready and we apply for NATO, Serbia's reaction is definitely one of the things that we will be looking at or that will make an impression on us. We, of course, want to see Serbia changing. We want to see Serbia becoming a country that really cares about rule of law, fighting crime and corruption, cares about human rights, and ultimately understands the reality that Kosovo is here to stay as a sovereign nation, as an independent country, a country within its current borders. We're not going anyway, so this, anywhere, so the sooner they understand this reality and accept it through mutual recognition, the better for them, as well as for peace and stability in the entire region. Um, in Kosovo, we have been analyzing this initiative since its very beginning, both from the political side as well as the expert side of it. And we've come to the decision that was diligently taken through a lot of analysis uh, that this is not an initiative that would treat Kosovo as an equal partner. Quite the opposite, through this initiative, Vucic aims to expand its hegemonic approach towards the region. Vucic aims to treat Kosovo uh, as an unequal partner by not recognizing its independence. In the other initiatives, the big difference is that we are treated as equals because those who have created these initiatives treat us as equals. For example, in the Berlin process, Germany has the main role of oversight and of bringing us together. And Germany makes sure that all the six Western Balkans countries are treated as equals and we push forward agreements that would accelerate our membership within the European Union instead of creating a waiting room that gives a reason and a justification to the European Union that they should not accelerate the process but they should leave us deal with uh, only with one another without actually recognizing the reality that without the membership of the Western Balkans in the European Union, there can be no Europe whole free and at peace, and there can certainly no, be no security in our continent. So we have been very clear on this position. We respect the position of other countries, but at the same time, we want for our position to be respected because it, it's a position that has been undertaken through very serious evaluation of all necessary factors. There are already a number of regional initiatives that we are part of, but the reason why we are there is because we are treated as equals and the, the principle of all inclusiveness was respected from day one. So all six Western Balkan countries took part in creating it instead of the open Balkan where we are neither inclusive nor equal. I definitely don't call it a problem. In, in fact, I believe that Kosovo and Montenegro have come to such a state of relations that every uh, discussion is made based on the principle of excellent neighborly relations. And when that is the overarching principle in every discussion, 
I never call anything on the table as a problem. Quite the opposite, it's a discussion, but I don't think it's a discussion for politicians at this point any longer. Montenegro has concluded its work through its ratification in the parliament many years ago. Kosovo has concluded its, its Kosovo politicians have done their work when it comes to ratification of three documents, which was the agreement itself, the statement by both presidents, presidents of Kosovo and Montenegro, and thirdly, the work of the committee. So all three documents were ratified to open the way for a joint technical committee to be formed so that it's the technical committee, the experts, that take on the work so far, from now on, and now it should be up to the technical experts to determine the steps forward rather than for politicians to make political statements that can only harm the way forward. So I'm very much in favor of having this technical, joint technical committee being established and working based on the principles of professionalism, excellent neighborly relations, and the legal frameworks that have already been uh, determined. And based on that, let them do their work and move forward on this issue.